and welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train, Jared Free, coming to you live from the quarantine cabin on the Lower East Side. We're here Monday through Friday. That's right, with your quarantine content. I say it every episode. Let me say it again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for telling a friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's how it all works. You listen, you tell a friend, you find an email in here that relates to a friend of a coworker, of a brother, of a sister, and then you say, hey, check this out. They're talking about your problem. And that's what it's all about. This is about people coming on, giving their perspective. We don't know what the fuck we're talking about. I'm not an expert. I'm just some guy that talks out of his ass. But we try to make it entertaining. We try to, I think the community of it, hearing that other people are going through your problems, that's helpful. Um, and you know, we're here. So also Instagram, I'm putting up videos. I put up clips every single day. So that's why I unfollowed ha- you. <laughs> why? I can't. I should have just muted. I'll mute. You have so what? many followers. You don't need me. S- well, you're a friend. This is supportive. I see everything from comics I like. Doesn't matter what it is. Good for Even you. Even if it's constant. I mean, what's constant? I'm putting up twice a day. Twice a day? Okay, you're right. I, I mean, like, to see twice a day a friend of yours who's just trying to better their lives. Like, that's Maybe what I'm like, <laughs> like, when some people are like, oh, you put a, Like, I, I could even see listeners of this would be like, okay, we get it. Well, I'm not doing it, you know, for, to neg- for negative reasons. It's all for positive. Someone, you might have a friend that connects to that video. You might have a coworker that connects to that video. Tag them. Let them know. Don't be a bad friend like Lisa Traeger is our guest today. Very excited to have Lisa, an OKP. It's been too long. So, um, how how are you? You're living in LA. Give us the LA. You're our reporter on the scene. You're our feet on the ground. Y- so you- what is great is my apartment is spacious. Mm. There's a balcony, beautiful weather. Um, sure. There's a lot of beautiful, you know, when you walk, there's palm trees and I have a palm with a desert tree outside my home. So like, that is all very nice. I, I saw a video of, um, is it Ari fin- Finling put yes. up the New York? Yeah. He's very funny. Uh, him and his brother, they put up a video of like New York quarantine versus LA quarantine. And and I did have that moment where I'm like, man, you guys, it is a, it's a different country. It is. Our stores are bigger. There's more grocery stores. So in the beginning it was crazy, but like you can get, you know, it's just um, more spacious and, I have a lot of great friends out here that have really been helping me. Um, I didn't have a car and our friends gave me their extra car so I can like. Extra car? Who are you hanging with? The Rockefellers? What's going well, on? It's two fam- it's, um, it's a married couple and one sure, of them's okay. not going to work. They only have one baby seat. So if our car seat. Again, this car. is, but this is the New York versus LA thing. Like right. it is, I mean, what, um, what has become very apparent is like, how different it is to live in different parts of the country. Like, I, I mean, like, maybe not as much. I, I thought we were all coming, to, like, you know, when we go do the road, when we go do stand-up in a town, we see, like, this. I see the same stuff in every town, but you yeah. begin to realize, like, every town is very different. Very Like, if I had a friend with an extra car here in New York, I my friend would be Jeffrey Bezos. Correct. Yes. <laughs> you know, New York like, is uh, definitely different. Yeah. You'd have to be a billionaire. Yeah. You're right. So, so you're, but you I do so- want to say, so LA, you know, it is beautiful. I sure. feel very grateful. I know I'm supported by a lot of great friends who come visit below my balcony and we talk and, you know, bring me stuff, but I am Rapunzel, you know I'm Rapunzel. Yeah. You're reckless. I have no savings. I have no job. I have no skills. <laughs> I am jealous of your, your podcasts, your Patreons. I should have d- done this years ago. <laughs> well, I am now learning what the teens know what to do. So I'm like, I guess I have to make, pa- I'm selling cameos. I'm grabbing my tits. I'm like putting uh, on lawn spray. I and get it. I'm, I'm just trying to make, a- so that's what's scary where I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I have nothing. So well, that's well that's- it, it is, it is for, for standups. And I like, never come back. And now I'm looking at people like you and I'm like, wow, he really <laughs> had it right. <laughs> I well, should have been it's, I should I have been pre- posting bachelorette <laughs> recaps, you know, instead of Let, hanging out with friends. I, I, well, I would say to you, you would probably enjoy doing a Survivor recap. Yeah, I'm auditioning for Survivor. I'm working on my audition tape. 
<laughs> so what brings you here? Well, my whole career was taken away by the coronavirus. That's why I'm here. Yeah, I, 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 I guess I appreciate that. I, I, um, I think it is a little embarrassing the minute you open up. Like I opened up TikTok at the beginning of the quarantine. I was like, I guess I'm here now. You know, I guess I'm learning how to do the, the arm dances and shit. Yeah, it's um, it's just like we were too cocky. I don't know. I thought I could. I thought I was like, I'm living the dream. I, and now it's like, I just don't even know when it'll. I don't know. It's scary. well, it's going to be I, I, I choose to live in the positive. You're going to be back You're on right. stage. You're going to be fine. Shows. That's why I reached out to you. I'm like, I want I miss this. I miss hanging out at comedy clubs. I miss seeing my friends. I miss yeah. talking shit. So I'm like doing open mics from Chicago on Zoom. Yeah, like, yeah am- well, <laughs> that's yeah. that's the thing that was like, you know, comedians especially, this whole idea of like, I'm an introverted extrovert. And it's like, I don't know what the fuck that means, but there's a lot of unsociable comedians who realize they are out every night. Like, like, and like you're in a very social position and that well, was taken I, away. You know, so I always say that I'm kind of an introvert and my friend, uh, our friend Julia Olson is like, you're a fuck, you're lying to yourself. Yeah. yeah. But to me, the difference is like, you know, Burt Kreischer, sure. I see him and he's like, Hey fans, meet me at this bar. I'm doing this. I'm not, nah, nah. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Like, I want to, I need, I can't go to a party alone. Like I need, I want to have a friend. I can, but like you, you want your okay piece. Yes, yeah, I'm you want your original key players. You want to know the group. I mean, so you did. You mentioned something before we got on, and we we talked for four seconds, yes. and then I got in a fight with my girlfriend, and then we started the podcast. It was a very awkward way to start to go from no, we're starting, and then well, that also reminds me. The last time I saw Jess was at our friend Ricky's wedding, which was like so chic and yeah. like fancy. And that's another thing. I'm like poor now, but people are like, <laughs> weren't you just in Miami at a hotel with two Damien Hurst art pieces? And I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Life comes at you fast. I, yeah. I, it's like a snicker. I was just like Palm Springs, Miami, back to back, like designer dresses. And then all of a sudden I'm washing Ziploc bags in the sink. I'm like, <laughs> so sad. You're like, we can't keep getting the Ziploc brand bags. We have to go oh, not bottom only shelf. I love this as an iced coffee guy. I've been saying, like, when I do get iced coffees, I save mm. them for two days. So I'm only drinking half and putting Is it there- in the fridge. Do you it's put like, milk in yours? Yeah. That kind of grossed me out. But I, like the, the saved milk, but you got to do what you got to do. We're all, you know, making changes, unprecedented times. Now, yeah. you, you, who are you? You mentioned something that I didn't think about. You go, I, I, who are you quarantining with and how are you doing it? So I am alone. Mm. Um, and a lot of my friends, most of my friends are in couples and they all, you know, um, Kristen Wiig and Bridesmaids when she's like, help me, I'm poor. That's kind of me right now. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. And sneezes now are so good. Cause you know, it's not Corona. Every time I sneeze, I'm like, fuck yeah, baby. <laughs> not a cough. <laughs> um, so people do feel bad for me. So I'm getting a lot of visitors, a lot of walk bys, a lot of deliveries of sweet things, lemon bars. Um, but <laughs> I do. Have I love a, a lemon bar. I love a lemon bar. But I love I a lemon. Have, underrated on the list of things. I do have a group of friends that will rename nameless, and we are going to create a cell and start <laughs> just with us. But so, I mean, how many in the cell? Well, there's kids involved and stuff. Okay, but it's total, including children. For the ten, listener, yeah, ten, ten exactly. of you. So you ten have agreed we will only see each other for physical and social interactions. Correct. And we have been and I've been in other situations where I have other friends that are like pod and it's like yeah. you're out. This is a whole new level of emails that will come into this podcast. Who do you it- accept in the pod? Who do you not like? Is there anyone on the on the edge? Is there anyone that you're like, yeah, we'll let you in. No, this is like family. This to me is like, sure. um, I think forever friends. I think it's like people. This is like, um, it feels like family. Like this, I you hope. guys could do a Thanksgiving together and oh, and yeah, and have be, a yearly tradition that could be this group. Yeah, we do holidays for sure. Yeah. Um, so th- if you're if you're about to give birth, you can call one of us and we'll take your other kid. But I have okay. other friends like that. This is the thing. I do have other friends I feel that like close with and their children. But 
it's just these are the times and i would do a distanced mask hang with other people or like sure in yards but i would not but yeah you know this is interesting because it's like who do you let in who do you make you know it is a it is one of those things that the quarantine has made you take stock everyone who are the people i really want to go see and spend a day with and like kind of be on the level of like hey, you know, we, we'll agree that we won't blame each other for the murder. <laughs> you know, like... Yeah, that um, is tough. It's also... Fuck, I lost... Oh, I was um, on Twitter, and I don't know if it was Tia or Tamara, well, but one of the sister sisters tweeted just, like, you really see who your true friends are, like, during this. And I was, I thought that was, like, a positive thing, where I was like, yeah, it's, like, so lovely to see people check in or text or people that you don't even know, but... The comments were a mess. You don't even understand. Sure. And I followed someone that retweeted it. It was like this selfish bitch. People have their own families to worry about. You narcissist. Like people were livid that she wrote that. And I was like, oh, just I just randomly like just like a, like a you see it is. So just randomly like she said, you see who your real friends are through this. And people took that as they were mad at people her. Like how dare you or like who's calling she and they're like they have their own problems. People be mentally at like do you expect calls? You're keeping stock on what oh people my. do. And I just took it so different. I was like, oh okay, but I, it's just <laughs> the internet's so crazy. Where I was like, well, this is so nice, and it was I, like, <laughs> die, bitch. <laughs> well, how dare I, you? I'm going, <laughs> I'm going through a minute of that myself. I saw the Adele picture. Oh, and I love your tweet. I, I, that, you know, you I saw you. I loved it. <laughs> well, I know you retweeted it, and I appreciated your support. And I, I just don't under like you see Adele, and you go, "Wow, good for her." That's all I said. Like because if someone showed up at your apartment a hundred pounds lighter. And you said nothing. That's crazier than saying it is you know, good for I, you. And I loved what you said, but it's like you didn't think she was great. And it's like, oh, everyone thinks Adele is great. But yeah. like you said, someone that like I feel great about myself. I work. I like. I feel good. I'm like trying my best. But if I lost a ton of weight, I would want attention. For for sure. I or lost maybe 15 pounds in the past six months, and I like when people don't say anything. I'm like, okay. I, I I completely agree. Completely like, you know agree. How hard it is to lose weight. She probably took her over a year. It's hard work, and there's. It's not saying that she wasn't beautiful before, or we wouldn't love her. If she gains it back, we're gonna shit on her. No one even. It was all just like, go, girl. That's hard I, work. I know, and it's like, I, and this is like, obviously, like I've gone through. I go through weight shit every day. Um, we all do. But it was like this community of people that like, you're not wrong. Like they aren't wrong. They're just, they're just, um, they're just bringing down the energy of the room. You know, like you and I are going, you go girl. Hey, and then like they're in the corner going, you didn't think she looked good before. And it's like, that's not what I was saying at all. Yeah, you don't and know that. I don't comment beautiful on all of her photos. It, exactly. And it's, but it, it what I have was an Adele in a blanket. I have an Adele <laughs> blanket <laughs> yes, on my couch right now. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> you've been supporting since day one, it, it, but they, they are right. When they say like, there's like fat phobia, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. Like, I think that's absolutely true. That can be they, what what people do is they bring their argument to your table. Like they see you as a, their experience. Yeah, it's like that's your shit that you're putting on all of us. That I remember once I started a Twitter fight and I tagged someone, and someone else tweeted like, "If you tag someone and hatch, that means you're just trying to get famous." And I was like, "That never even crossed yeah. my mind." <laughs> I just wanted to make my friends laugh. Like that's on you. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's a Tia. That's back to the Tia and Tamara thing, yes. where you're like, where like you know, you know, like uh, like wet Wendy Smith in Idaho is like is going is mad about Tia Tia and Tamara's like it's crazy. You know, like saying like you know who your real friends are. Like yeah, it is. Um, the, I also the, the people that don't ch have it. I don't consider them less friends either. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's we're just I, like we're trying our best. But also with the weight loss thing, I see the points of them too. Where like 
sometimes someone's not healthy or they're sick and people just keep being like, you look great. You look great. Uh, totally. Totally. And then they find out, but it's like what you, that's why your tweet was perfect where it's like, we're not saying the other thing. It, it's just, a, it's such a multi-layered subject, like weight and what's healthy, what's not. And it's like, it is funny that like people come to my defense and I'm like, well, not you, you're an asshole. Like someone will be like, skinny is healthy. And you're like, okay, that's not even well, I'm not even in that game. And it's like, it, it, it is, I, I, I was having a moment, like you brought up that tweet of Tia Tamara. I'm having a moment where I was like, oh, I, I'm, I'm happy it's happening in other ways. Like, you know, like no, it's not yeah, just. Yeah, no, people are nuts. And also, yeah, the, this argument of like, but obesity is actually, and it's like fat people know. Yeah, They're reminded yeah, yeah. every day. People yeah. treat them like shit every day. Every day. You it's know? a horrible. They don't need to be reminded about cholesterol. You know yeah. what and, I mean? And, it, like, and, and, know. It's like, and it's like good looking people. That's like thin privilege. Like, yeah, good looking people have it easier. Like, <laughs> like babies respond better to good looking faces. Like they've done the experiments. Like, and that, that's just like a reality of like a horrible reality of like, that put it in the phylum of life sucks. Like, I don't know. It's, yeah, but it's, people going on Lizzo's Instagram to be like, bah, 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 bah. it's like, oh my God. Knows. We know. Know. We know. We but know. also, what, you're, you're an Ashley Graham fan. I feel like. Love her. Love her. Love her. People always shit on her. Like, people say mean shit to her. And it's like, if you follow her on Instagram, that bitch is working out every day. And yeah, yeah. every day. And, if you think that you're in better shape than Ashley Graham because she's thick, you're well, bonkers. <sighs> Also, like, we don't know the height of these people. Like, you go, like, Ashley Graham, like, if she walked by me, it would be like a peacock walking by, I feel like. Like, it, like I wouldn't even know, you know, it would be, like, I one time saw Rihanna walking through Times Square, and I it was as if a giraffe walked by. Like, it was, no one looked like they were the same species as Rihanna. It was like this, like, like like a parade float walking by and you're like oh my god your proportions are superhuman you know like and that's kind of like the same as like an ashley graham where you're like there's a superhuman thing like that's why she's a model that's why she's yes. you know so i i we could go on and on this is a subject that lisa and i probably would love to go on. but i want to do the emails and i want you all to go follow we listen we need to go support lisa traeger she is a fantastic comedian who is washing out Ziploc bags, okay? We need to help her. You need to go follow her on Instagram, even though she doesn't follow me because of two posts no, a day. <laughs> so, I don't go. know what it though. There was obvious, I don't know what it was. Maybe, oh, you, do you, you post a lot of your tweets. Is that it? Yeah, why not? So that's, pro, that's right. Pa you should do that too. Packaging, bitch. So, <laughs> so now. That's why, you know, you, you're you invested in real estate, you know, like that's. Yeah. This is, so listen, everyone go follow Lisa on Instagram, on Twitter, at oh, Lisa yeah. Traeger. I know we're getting into emails, but I'm not going to name names, but I found out about somebody who's hooked up with multiple people during this time. Well, this is, this is happening a lot. Like it, it like. It is interesting the rationalizations that are being made. Like Correct. I also feel guilty about this pod that I am gonna. You know. No, but you made a pod and you guys made a pact and you talked it out. It I would. I would. Feels uh, bad. It's so. Feels cool, but guilty. but you might feel guilty. But I'm saying like you know it is interesting that. But fucking strangers is different than people you've known a decade. Listen, I'm. I, I agree with you, but it, it's like it's like levels of these things. Like it is funny to me. That people are like, look at those fucking idiots in Michigan marching. And you're like, yeah, they are kind of fucking idiots. And then they're like, but I've been in my place for two weeks, so I'm going to hook up with this guy I met on Tinder. And you're like, okay, you're just not next to a Nazi. Like, like I, you know, like I, it is level. And it's like, no, that's why. Of judgy. I have friends that are like traveling right now. And I'm just like. And, and the thing is, the day is going to come where you have to make a decision. And it's like, I've kind of preached the word on this podcast, and I do believe it, that like, go talk to your parents about their social distancing, not the random person you've never met on, so on social media. Like, like oh, it's yeah. so much harder. Like, I, my conversations with family are so much harder to well, have. I yelled and screamed at my parents, and then two of their friends from the pool died. So then they quickly maybe started to listen. <laughs> I'm just imagining your parents like packing up a, like a, a Russian car, <laughs> like like like. So my dad was trying to go to Walgreens. He was trying to visit. For, I mean, he and they're older. 
My dad is 82 years old. Yeah, he's a walking, you know, uh, problem. It's like, but that's the thing, like, with it's so yeah, hard. Yeah, listen to Russian TV. I call my, my mom, like, this is in the beginning. She went, I mean, they said everything's fine. I go, you dumb <laughs> bitch. You dumb bitch. But uh, that conversation with your mom is so incredibly more difficult than posting on Instagram, stay the fuck home, bitches, you idiots. It's like. Yeah, because you have to deal with your mom going, but why? And you're like, I love you, but I need you to stop. My dad turned into a golf uh, pirate. He was traveling from county to county in Florida with a fucking Viagra flag out the window, you know, go- going, finding golf courses that were would stay open. Like, And I was like, what are you doing? Would he wear a mask? He would do whatever was asked of him, but he wasn't like, I was like, you got to like, why yeah, is this? Florida. And Florida hasn't had the issues. So now he's like kind of like he's been like proven right in his fucked up way. And it's like you're just not going it, to. It, it's tough to win with the faceless is it's what I'm just saying. Cra- um, so I read a thing and basically contagion, they say, is like the professionals, these scientists, epid- whatever it is that sure. study these diseases. Epidomola, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they... <laughs> Um, said contagion is the closest to reality. And okay. so they went and talked to the writer, the scientists that helped make that movie. And they're like, what did you get wrong? And all of these scientists are like, we could have never predicted that people would be protesting a virus. They're like, that's <laughs> what we could have never guessed that we would be like, this is what you need to do to stay safe. And people go, fuck you, bitch. Like, uh, <laughs> no I one. Mean, I mean, the- I do. I, I do understand. And Independence Day, the people dancing under the UFO lights. Yeah, that. that so th- they got that right. I, I do understand the 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 need to work. Like it's just like the again, like this has highlighted all of the extremes that we, you know, we've spent how many years on stage talking about like the two sides being the same and, and being you know I talk through, about myself. Well, but I'm saying like <laughs> how many times have we seen people get offended? And we're yeah. like, you took this in the so extreme way. And yeah. we've known that these, and now it's just highlighted. But we digress. I want to get to the emails because Lisa is such a fantastic guest. My Go favorite follow. Part. Go Let's- follow Lisa right now. Cameo, uh, glitter cheese. And then I'm, lo- I'm doing su- stuff on Patreon. It's kind of a mess. <laughs> at glitter cheese. I kept forgetting at glitter cheese. It's, uh, how could I, I forget? So it's, go, go, go. It's all over my Instagram. Go follow, go follow, go follow. Let's do this. Uh, let's just dive right in. Um, let's do quarantine dating. Have, oh, yeah. I've also, yeah. All right, Are you hooking up with anybody? Okay. I mean. I, I wasn't hooking up with anyone f- before all this. So this would be shocking. Yeah. Um, I do have fantasies of meeting someone off the balcony. I'm trying, like, I would love to fall in love in this time. Um, no, I'm talking to one girl casually on like okay. Instagram DMs. Okay. Listen, but we've been talking ha- for like months and months and months and not, like, it's just. Well, just- this is kind of on that subject. I've been talking to this guy for seven weeks now since the start of quarantine. I'm currently not talking to anyone else, really. We text all the time and have done a few phone calls. We're both looking for something serious. He said he would love to eventually meet me and see where things go from there. I'm 22, he's 25. I just don't know where this is going, really, because he's going down south for his master's in August. I'm going up north to finish my undergrad in September. He's a big believer, and if it's meant to be, it'll be. He's asked me questions pertaining to the future, like if I want kids, how many kids I want, or like my relationship history. I've never been in a relationship, and this is probably the longest time I've talked to a guy before things have gone wrong. What do you think he's thinking? So the whole time before you said something towards the end was mm. girl, LOL, that he thinks he's going anywhere in August. No one's <laughs> going anywhere. Anyone that's delusional enough to be like, oh, my wedding in September, maybe cancel it. Okay. Um, so to me, that's all silly of like, I'm going here. LOL. Sure. Um, sure. It's a pandemic, take, you know, go do a distance picnic. Like, who gives a fuck? Like, so what if this is the man of your dreams? Do it. But the like maybe two like how many kids do you want is this love is blind like what's happening yeah his mental illness but i did that before like you're project to me this is like you're projecting a lot onto a person that you don't even really know yet i'm with you so up until then i was like just who cares 
I Stop. she wants she wants I can so the answers are a lot of times in the emails and I think you're right. She wants answers to questions she can't get answers to. She writes in her email, "We're both looking for something serious." Okay, which I LOL at myself because you have you never even met in person. And then she said, "He said he would love to eventually meet me and see where things go from there." And then he's a big believer in if it's meant to be, it'll be. To me, the person who says if it's meant to be, it'll be, and we'll see, uh, we'll see where it goes from there, is not someone who's automatically looking for someone something serious. Those wow. are two different people. You know, that like, is like you're a spy, dude. Right? I would not. Have, I didn't pick up on any of those clues. But those two lines, when when someone says to me. We're both looking for something serious. Oh, okay. Like, as if I'm just going to like, okay, we'll check that box. You can't be, I think what she's looking for is for us to tell her like, okay, he's definitely going to want to date next and then it's going to be this. And then I don't care how many babies he's talked about. I don't care how many fucking, you know, he's going south. You're well, going so north. This is my question, Jared. Yeah. If he's talking about how many kids to have and then also like, whatever, we'll see. Are those games? Is he like like is he a I think that's one? I I think that's texting for 7 weeks without having any any experiences together to really talk about. Like okay. right now everyone gets to write their own script. I don't think he's trying to like willingly like pull a fast one on her. I do think he knows she likes having those conversations. Like she's excited by those conversations. And and what you know, you do what selfishly all of us do what makes us feel good. And in, that includes saying nice things. So do you want to get married one day? Like, I, I know that that's a because even from her email, I've never been in a relationship. This is probably the longest I've been talking to a guy. She's very happy with what's going on. Yeah. And she's trying to she's trying to um, also, take, girl, you're 22. Stop trying to rush to get married in a pandemic. I know. Like, I know yeah, I know. Without ever touching, without ever knowing how big his penis is. Also, we're looking for different things in this time. Like if this is the end is near or something like this is crazy times. Like to try to zoom into a real serious relationship mid pandemic. I don't know. It should be. I don't know. It's My like biggest, yeah, I, I think, well, what, what, what it tells me, what the email tells me is that she's nervous about getting burnt. Like, she's nervous about giving into this thing and then he yeah. fucking, you know, fucks and chucks. And let me tell her this right now. This is the only advice I can give her, like, for sure. He wants to fuck you. He doesn't know if he'll want to see you after he fucks. Like, I, I just... Though and and he might like you, he might have said these beautiful things, but to go to like use because it's like I just know when someone gives me like he said this, he said that, it's them trying to let me know. Well, here's the reasons, here's the resume, and I'm like, all those resume items matter zero. Are you enjoying the conversation? If it's a yes, keep going. When you go to meet him, do you have to fuck him? No. Go meet him. Hang out. Have fun. And then do go not do what I have to him at first. I would say, it's, uh, you know what I mean? Because it's also like I heard you can fuck, but you shouldn't kiss. Oh, I mean, that's a good, that someone wrote that in. And I was like, I, I don't know what kind of weird, like, like hey, if you're fucking just do it. At that point, yeah. forget the grandparents. They're gone. We are sponsored, people. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Fab Fit Fun. Fab Fit Fun. I love, I love Fab Fit Fun. We just got the summer box and it's full of great stuff. We got hydropeptide face oil, Tare Mare toner, and a scent diffuser, and some sunglasses from Tom's. I love, I love Fab Fit Fun. I love. That it's a little surprise gift to yourself or to someone you love, and it's a way for you or them to get into new goodies you never would have given yourself. You never would walk into the store and be like, I need that cream, I need that, because you don't know, and right now, you know, we're all pinching the belt. We're all making sure to make better decisions with our money. And if you're going to treat yourself and you're going to get a new cream and you're going to get a new lotion, you want to know it's going to be good and that you're going to like it. And FabFitFun gets you a box 
that is worth over $200. Let me repeat that. The box is worth over $200 if you went out and bought each item on their own. And you're going to get everything for just $49.99. So this is, I think they call it arbitrage. You're using the platform of FabFitFun, their buying power, to get yourself some new goodies. And listen, you're not going to like everything in the box. That's what it's all about. It's the, I, I Listen, I get one for Jess, and I, I, she'll sit on the couch, and I'll be about like six feet away. I social distance myself whenever she gets a box because I'm afraid of getting clawed by her because I, I, I take a stick and I push it towards her and like a raccoon going through the garbage. She's, she's sniffing, she's feeling, she's picking up, she's trying on and some things get thrown to the wayside. She goes, ah, gross. And other things she's like, I love it so much. I want to marry it. That's the thing. It is a roller coaster of emotions every time a FabFitFun box comes and it's actually the most fun. Just and who doesn't love judgment? That's the fun part is judging all the stuff that comes and then getting one thing. I can say you're going to get one thing out of the box that you're like, "Ah, that's a part of the routine. That's in. That's something I'm going to use forever." And you're going to get a box that's worth over $200 for 49.99. It's time to customize your box for summer season so you can customize. This is great. Sign up today to get your first box. Join a community of over 1 million obsessed women. Use coupon, and I'm one of the men, the, the men that's obsessed. Use coupon code JTRAIN, that's JTRAIN, that's JTRAIN, for $10 off your first box at fabfitfun.com. Once again, that's code JTRAIN for $10 off your first box at fabfitfun.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com here with Lisa Traeger at Glitter Cheese. Go follow, go follow right now. Cameo, Patreon. She's doing it all. Uh, Rub a dub dub. Okay. So, in a fairly new relationship, exclusive since February, we're doing well balancing quarantine at a pace that makes us both comfortable. But I think we just entered a new phase of comfort. I understand the honeymoon is kind of over uh, because quarters are so close, but also I didn't realize it has come to this. I'm unemployed and my boyfriend is still working from home. I go over on Friday night and typically leave Tuesday morning and our weekends are nice, full of quality time. This week, the day got away from us and I ended up staying over Tuesday night too. I decided to go out for a bike ride around 6 p.m. to call my friend so I didn't interrupt his work call. When I got back like 30 minutes later, I noticed the bed was unmade and his laptop was on the nightstand. Dun, dun. We know what that means. So I was like, did you take a nap? And he was like, no, just watching TV since I got off the phone. And I made a face and he said, sheesh, no secrets allowed, I see. He rubbed one out while I was gone. And then my mood changed because A, I'm already feeling insecure not being able to work out like I normally do or wax and nails, etc. that I loved it uh, to do for me. But also B, like why not wait till I got home and we can have sex? I understand people masturbate and dudes do it a lot to relieve stress and he's been busy with work. I didn't say anything, but he noticed my mood was different. But when he asked, uh, I didn't say why because it was just wor- it, it just wor- worth it at this t- because it just wasn't worth it at this time. But like, really, it's come to this when I got out uh, for a quick buck bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that she's like, a quick buck ride. How could he? Yeah. Why not just wait till I go home the next day? I feel like we're newish and I'm not ready nor stable enough to see what I'm uh see that when I'm around. Help. Should I be concerned? What do you think? I think people are allowed to masturbate. Yeah. I I don't think it's I don't want to fuck you. And I think obviously she's feeling insecure because of like the maintenance and all of that. Mm. But I just I think I read this somewhere. I just, uh, I think people are allowed to masturbate. I don't know. I just don't yeah. see I think the problem is that he lied. Yeah. That's well, my I, problem. The fact that she keeps being like, he masturbated, he masturbated. It's like, no, he lied. He should have said I jerked off. Yeah. And I'm sure like, I do understand from his point of view where he's like, ah, uh, I kind of wanted to like, I, I think, you know, I, I, I think also like masturbation, I, you ever masturbate and you're like, Man, I didn't even know that was going to happen. Like, you kind of surprise yourself. 
Like, like you kind of like get it. Like to like, I just feel like sometimes I'll look down and my penis will be in my hand, and I'll be like, oh. Well, the, uh, Sarah Silverman, I think, I, I think it was in an episode of Louie. They're like all around a poker table and sh- they're talking about masturbating and she, like on a sick day when you're home all day alone. Sure. And she said, for girls, you're always kind of pressing on it. Okay. <laughs> like if I'm ho- like, yeah, my hand is in my underwear most the like the time at night, always. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but. Throughout, That's kind of, yeah. <laughs> throughout the yeah. day, you just hand on the button, ready to drop the nuke. It's like warm and nice. Like, I don't know. It's like, uh, you're just down. Yeah. Listen, my hands are on my balls all day. I mean, Jess looks at me and is like, what are you doing? I'm like, I, I, this is just a normal state for me. Um, I feel like he shouldn't have lied, but she shouldn't take it personal. But also, you can work out. I've been doing Tybo every day. Yeah. And That's masturbation. A lot. Five days, five days. <laughs> masturbation and sex are masturbation is like a break from the world that is like having a glass of wine sex is like a total like two people same wavelength and and i i just think to take this personally you're making a mountain out of a molehill like you, you gotta yeah, get over something this something he enjoys doing and this is the thing you are you did you watch all of sex in the city yet or no not, not all of it did you see when trey is masturbating and won't fuck charlotte no so that was annoying because he goes, that's my wife. And se- this masturbation has nothing to do with her. And I thought that was fucked. Like, yeah, it doesn't seem like his issues. Like, I feel like they're probably fucking like if he just wasn't alone for five days and was like, oh, yeah, I get to I'm going to masturbate alone. I'm alone. Sure. I think it's like a thing you, you're you excited to do by yourself. I just don't think she should take it personal. No. I and, and, and I think the more personally she takes it, the more it's like, you know, now you feel like you're kind of like taking care of someone's emotional stability you know what i mean like and it all depends on if you will masturbate or not and then yeah and then it's like how and then he's gonna hide it again and then it's like when can he do it like listen i've taken a lot of long showers so to speak during this uh thing if i came out and my girlfriend was like oh you don't want to fuck me i'd be like yeah i do but not, you know this was a me time you know like it's just a different thing J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. You with Lisa Traeger. Have you been watching Vanderpump Cheese. Rules? So I got, a, I did season one of Vanderpump and then I let, I, I tried so to get back in. You're not watching this season. No, I'm not. I, I turned on Real Housewives in New York last night and. I didn't watch it yet last night. I'm going to watch it right after, right after this podcast. How annoyed were you? Oh, you didn't watch it last night? No, I watched Beverly Hills. I'm a little behind. I've okay. been obsessed with um, the Americans and Drag Race. So okay. I actually have like a Top Chef, a New York, like I have some Bravo waiting. You got to text me and tell me if you're annoyed at the comedy stuff that comes up. Oh, yeah, I will for it, sure. It, the, say she's, she's a comedian? This other guy does. He, oh, and Jacques. I, had to turn, I heard Jacques. Jacques. Yeah. Jacques doing stand up. And then I was sent the clip of him doing it. And it was like, I got to. I might jump off the fucking roof. Uh, boyfriend. He's not the first New York housewife. Like, um, I mean, Jersey housewife. There's a guy who did a stand up show too. It's like, yeah. And, and crazy. But, boyfriend, boyfriend. Wait, hold on. I was going to oh, tell sorry. you. No, I brought up Vanderpump for a reason. So like okay. Katie, there's one character, Katie who sucks and she's married to this guy, Tom and Tom gets wasted. And then Katie does something super annoying, but Tom drunk goes, Ugh, this is why I don't have sex with you. I've never been less attracted to a person in my life. You're disgusting. That's why we See, never and it was like That is but that's so, diabolical because it's I that to me is the same thing. Did you watch Love is Blind? Of course. Come, so, Jared. so I know, but so when she's when that girl, um, the blonde one, when she looks at the camera and she's like, You know how I said you were the best I've ever had? You're like Okay, the guy that you're talking about, her in that situation, they're using like the show as like a weapon at that point because they're like dealing, they're like trying to embarrass the other person using their sexuality. Like to me, it's like such a mind blowing, like awful thing. Like, like the fact that this blonde girl from Love is Blind wasn't canceled right away by like everybody. You know my beliefs on this. And to me, it's like he's probably fucking her poorly. 
and she and he's not noticing. So to him, the best sex of his life has nothing to do with her pleasure or how she's enjoying it. So to me, it was like, yeah, you fuck, you suck at fucking her, but they're still together, and he's a Trump voter. So like, I don't care about him. Okay, I well, I, <laughs> and she was my favorite. I loved her flowery language. I loved how. Oh, crazy I hated she her was. so much. She's clearly much. the hottest, and definitely I the hottest. It's too good for him. Well, that's a different story, he did but I my least favorite things when like they were on the boat and she was like, what do you mean? Like, what are you running away from in your life? And he was, and he like shut down and pretend, I hate when people shut down and act different, but pretend nothing's different. Oh, I know what you mean. I, but I mean, I'm to not me, mad. I'm totally fine. Like, yeah, I, that's annoying. I'm totally fine. Is like, I, I do. If I ever get in an argument like that, I go, well, you're not, let's go. Let's do it now. Like, get it out. And if yeah. you need time, you can say, like NeNe Leakes did this in the last Atlanta reunion. And it was mm. like, she was just like, what? What's different? And I, yeah. like, I hate that because hate that, that. They, they become what they those people become lingering farts. They 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 are literally like blowing themselves up to ruin everyone else's time when they do that shit. Yes, and then and, the and other it, person seems crazy. Where you're like, nothing is wrong, and you're nuts. And that's yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, I just like hate well, it. Well, my point with him in that situation is like, if you're not fucking, if I'm not fucking you right. You there's times to tell me that aren't on camera that you know won't get me, you know, like looked at as like like I got DMs after that being like people being like he's got a small penis. I'm like, I don't you, you, well, you know who? what's different is she's sober and calculated, maybe. Tom was wasted, and that is yeah. his truth. It's a, that's rough. That's rough on TV. Like I feel for that person. I think that's like abusive in a in a certain sense. Like that's like the J Train Podcast is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. During this time of change, we want you to know that Zip Recruiter's focus hasn't changed. They're doing they're still doing what they've always done, helping people find work and helping businesses find the right people for their open roles. If you're looking for a job, Zip Recruiter is work working with you to find the right job faster. They are dedicated to helping you get hired, from caretaking to delivering food and goods to building medical facilities, supplying protective of equipment and so much more. In fact, ZipRecruiter's app will send you up-to-date job openings so you can be one of the first to apply. And if you're actively hiring, ZipRecruiter will invite candidates to apply to your most re- most urgent roles. Uh, making it faster and easier to reach the people you need. By connecting people who need jobs and companies that need people, ZipRecruiter is working with all of us so we can keep moving forward. Let's work together. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash work together. I'll say it again. ZipRecruiter.com slash work together. Let's go to the next email. Boyfriend stuck in the past. J Train, huge fan. Thank you for single handedly saving me from the insanity of this quarantine. Your advice is spot on. You're hilarious, and the guests you have on are perfectly chosen. I know you'll think that about Lisa. Go follow her at Glitter Cheese. Anyways, I've been dating my boyfriend since sophomore year of high school. We are now out of college, both 22. Neither of us have ever dated anyone else and anticipate st- spending the rest of our lives together. My problem is that my boyfriend still acts in some ways like we were in high school in regards to our relationship. He texts me in all capitals. Okay, let's let's go through her problems and see if that's an issue. He texts me in all capitals. Are you okay oh, with wait. that? Not a- that would annoy me. I'd be like, can you stop, please? Okay, text cute emojis and gifts. Love, love. I love that. Love. love. Calls me nicknames. I think that's love. nice unless they're love. mean. Uh, and overall acts extremely cheesy both in person and in text. You he might also not com- like that. <laughs> I, it's, that's what it sounds like. He also compliments me nonstop. I feel crazy for saying this, but I honestly wish... <laughs> Did she just explain like someone's like perfect boyfriend? Yeah. <laughs> he got, he, like He's cheesy with me. He gives me nicknames and he loves me more than anything in the world. What? I feel crazy and for saying... And using this. emojis. <laughs> yeah, like what? I feel crazy for saying this, but I honestly wish that he would compliment me less and text act more maturely. But I don't know how to do this without hurting him. Since we have only ever dated each other, he is still naive when it comes to dating and definitely not jaded. So I worry that this, is, this sort of feedback would discourage him. This has become even more pr- uh, prominent to me as we're in quarantining 
separately. I work at a hospital and spend a lot of time texting, and I feel like I'm going to lose it when he sends me a kissy face emoji. Do I need to get over myself, or is there any way I can nicely tell him to take it down several notches? What do you think? Well, also when she's like, he's naive about dating, it's like you guys have the same amount of experience. I don't know why you think yeah. you have more knowledge than him. And honestly, also, you're, also you're what's to be naive? Too. You're immature. You're not communicating yeah. what you want. Yeah. You no, know? like you're both immature. Uh, you know, our friends Mike Cannon and um, his wife, they. Um, Mike Cannon been a guest on the show. Yes. Fantastic comic. Yes. And his wife's amazing. Buds of Brooklyn um, is her floral company, okay. which is amazing. But love it. what I love about them is they've been together since like eighth grade or something. But then they took a break. Yeah. And now they're married and have a beautiful kid and live this nice sure. life where they were smart enough to be like, we don't want to just only ha like. I, I know. Like and, that. and that's not for everyone. You know, my sister and her husband have been together since sophomore year and they're together. I'm just saying like. It's well to that the, point. The decisions. You, I, don't know. I I to that point you, when someone's like, oh, no one, no one stays together since high school. No one meets this. No, everyone on earth has met via every situation. So I like don't lean on those 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 stories you hear to strengthen your own story. Also, don't lean on those stories to weaken your own story. So, yeah. in living in that reality. I'm taking this email as she wrote it. This sounds like you're just not really into it. Correct. So that's, yeah. Why are you saying you want to be with him? There's not really, you don't like, like it. Like she writes to us with these problems and she goes, when, when she said my boyfriend still uh, is that my, my problem is that my boyfriend still acts in some ways like we're in high school. I thought she was going to be like, he's chugging natty lights. He never texts me. He's he's out in the woods smoking weed. Like I I had no when she was like, and he texts me too much. He wants to get a mortgage. He like he like but to none me of this that is, like, is about high school. I said no nonstop. I think her perspective is a little off. Like I think like I think what she's afraid of is admitting to the reality that maybe you're not that into this guy anymore. And listen, breaking up with someone doesn't mean you have to hate them. It doesn't mean that they were a bad experience for you or that time spent was a bad experience. It has made you who you are today. You wouldn't know your taste in kissy face emojis that be, uh, if it wasn't for him. So, a lot of these relationships, like I know she's probably afraid of like admitting this, like you're growing up and he's growing up and you're becoming two different people that aren't the puzzle piece that fits anymore. Yeah. And and that's scary because she's like, you know, we've known each other since high school. I get why it's scary, but I think if you told this, I think when you say to someone, um, here's the problems with my boyfriend or girlfriend and that person looks at you and goes, well, some I would love that. That means it's just not your type. Yeah, actually, I got into a, a Sex in the City. There was like a Twitter, like, who's the worst, who's the best? Yeah. And I was like shitting on Aiden. <laughs> and uh, Molly Rubin Long wrote, she wasn't right for, he wasn't right for Carrie, but it doesn't mean me and him wouldn't work out. And I was like, that's so Absol I fucking think of that. It's, I was it's like, true. Fuck this guy. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, yeah. There's so many scenarios where you're like, you're trying to just make it work with someone because- the, the reality is like, oh, my God, I got a date. I got to find someone new. I hear about how horrible dating is. All these guys are assholes. But then you're just trying to, like, try on clothes that don't fit but when you could look before, great in other clothes. But also before you full on just realize, like, if you want to take you can also just be like, hey, can you not text me so often at work? I really it bothers me when you do like if it's just those things. Yeah. Then you yeah. need to communicate that. But there's uh, my friend used to have a joke where it's like, if you like a guy, he could shit on your bed and you'd be like, oh, my God, he left me a little, thing. you know, like, <laughs> sure, you're going you're gonna to enjoy everything a person does, kind of. And so I know I, I, she should talk to him first, see if a change helps. But I do think like, let's you know, not make him the bad guy. Like, I, I don't like when you come in like he's acting like a when, when someone's like so far off in their description of of what I would think they're going to say. I'm always like, I, you just, you're like creating reasons that he's this bad guy, but he seems like a pretty 
so it seems like it's okay to me you know like yeah you've gotten better and better at this we haven't done this in a while you've really i mean i'm going since going daily i i am really You're doing this every it, day monday through friday i'm answering emails where where i mean i made a real pivot we might go back once the quarantine's over but for now i listen i gotta do something just like you know no, this is amazing but yeah you've gotten these are good advice. Like, I, I, I appreciate it. about talking about Mike Cannon and my sister. I was like, wow. Yeah. Okay. This no, got to something. I, I, I appreciate that. Cause I was in a dark place. I get, I, I put out videos and sometimes the videos like it gets taken in such another direction where I'm like, yeah, I probably should have. Cause we answer these off the cuff. Like we're giving our perspective and like, there are points where like, I'm, I'm always hoping I'm not saying something that like one person or community would be like, well, you didn't say this, and that's why you're pro. Like, and it's like I, I, this is a fun thing, and I, you know, there's there's certain things when I give advice, and when you give advice, when we all talk, that we all live in this like background of a, of I call it the background of of course. Like when someone's like like when someone wrote, we had someone write in that their boyfriend wanted to come on their face, and they were like, and and they were like they told their boyfriend that's degrading. And I was like, well, and then at the end of their email, they wrote, but I want to fulfill his sexual fantasies. I was like, well, you haven't really made it a place like I, I and you didn't really make it a comfortable place for someone to be vulnerable with their sexual fantasies by saying that they're degrading women. Like, you know, I live in the land of like and then so I talked about that. But then I, in my mind, of course, she can say no to come on the face. Yeah. Like, of course. But. There were people saying that I sounded like I was like saying that she should just have to deal with come on the face. And it's like, no, I think when you're talking about sexual fantasies, it's very well, difficult. Sasha from Gray, male- um, a legendary porn star. She mm. has a kind of famous quote where what's degrading to some is empowering to others. Totally. And he really gets off on making like degrading porn. And she loves okay. it. And sure. I, like, I think... Uh, but if so, but if so, so I'm sorry. You want to get cummed on their face, or like they do want to be this, like they want to be degraded during fucking, and it makes them feel good. So totally, the, you're right about. I thought you were right on the money in like a really cool feminist um, approach to the topic of like, yeah, you you know, you the act in itself isn't what's degrading, and he should be able to talk about his fantasies. But I don't think you were saying that she had to do it. But no, I, yeah, I, I but I, but again, so like I get like. I was like feeling like so bad about it. And it's like, I think people think that like when you put stuff out there, you don't like f- hear any of the feedback. I hear it. And you're like, oh man, I, I, I feel badly that anyone would take it that way. But you know, I, there's some yeah. emails I wish I got another shot at, you know, like, but l- let's do another email. You sure. ready? Well, I just had one of those, I reposted Solomon Giorgio. Um, and he, he just, he had a really beautiful, unfortunately sad tweet that was, um, Black people deserve be- better things to celebrate than, oh, like, than the the, uh, the guys. Minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And someone wrote, "This is true, but it is a victory because people came to get." And I'm gonna go. I know. But I didn't say I didn't believe those things. Well, your your Adele tweet was just perfect. But right? that's the that's the most miserable person in the room. Like you can't just take that as a nice thing he's saying and a and a a. a, a of course, we're happy these people are arrested, but it sucks. Yeah. That we have to be. I know it's happy it's, about that. it's 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 the land of uh, of misery. You know, uh, let's do it. Can definitely be like, I don't want to get cummed on my face, dude. Sorry. I mean, and uh, it was Keep funny. Watching I, porn of it. It's not going to happen. I don't like that. I, <laughs> I talked to Jess about it and she was like, how could you not tell this story about one time? You know, she wanted me to come on her face and I was like, I got like uncomfortable. I was like, not, I don't know. I don't know if I should, should I really? And like, I was in the position of like, and like, she's like, why didn't you tell that story? I'm like, yeah, you're fucking right. I should have told that story. And I'm like, also like, I didn't want to like, you know, put her name on this. And I'm like, you know, like whatever, let's do another email. How to call out a not single DM slider. Okay. Feather, feather, extra thanks for your beach by happy hour last Thursday because it was the highlight of my week. We're doing another. Uh, when this comes out, it will already be done. So thank you to everyone who came. What is it? Uh, this Thursday night, I've been doing these. Like It's like a talk show. It's a lot of fun. And 
really well produced. You don't see the audience, so it's nice. It's like I, you just put out the show. There's a chat function. Um, this will be the day after, so thank you to everyone who got involved. It was fun. Love you. So about six years ago, I dated this guy for a few months. I really liked him, but he kind of let it fizzle. I unfollowed, unfriended then because I was really hurt. He didn't and so would sometimes like my posts. I recently followed him back because, one, his posts are really cool. Uh, he is a f- uh, photographer. And two, he is looking pretty good, LOL. Okay, after I followed, I realized once I scrolled down a bit on his feed that he has a pic from Christmas time with a girlfriend. He started a conversation and we chatted a bit every day, every few days during this quarantine. Never anything def- definitively flirty, but it just feels a bit icky. I want to address it and not be shady for his girlfriend's sake. What should I say to him? Is this him throwing uh, the ball to his future post COVID-19 self? Love and stuff XX to you and Jess. So what do you think? What do I think? Does it matter? Like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it matters. No, I'm just thinking, like, if she, uh, does she want to just ask him, like, hey, does your girlfriend know we're talking? Or, like, would your girlfriend mind that we're talking? Yeah, I think there's a fun way to, like, slip it in. Um, and it's also, like, I think what a lot of, I know a lot of, like, men, and I'll, and I'll put, women do this too. Anyone who's cheating is going to want you, you know, there's this like cheating strategy that a lot of DMers will pull where they don't, like what she's saying is a very real thing. Nothing definitively flirty, but it feels icky. So like this guy who has a picture with a girlfriend from Christmas, hey, responds to your stories, responds to your stories. Now you're following back. How you been? What's going on? And it's like, she probably feels weird because she's like, I don't want to call him out if he's just being nice, but like at a certain point you have to admit to your own reasons for being there. And she said it to herself. She goes, he's looking pretty good. That's why she followed back. So like I would admit you have to be vulnerable to like, so that you're talking in the same Cause with DMs, like it gets so confusing because you're not on a dating app. So like one person could be there because you like their photography, and it's like this guy can be there. Oh, I'm just a photographer with a wife, and it's like he's gonna make it. L- let this conversation go on as long as like if he's looking to cheat, he'll let this go on for as long as you'll let it until the point where you're pushing for him to cheat, and it's not him pushing. Because if you're pushing, then you'll blame yourself. You won't look like get mad at him or get mad at the wife. You, it, 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 it's like this like diabolical scheme. So you need to like admit that you're there because you think he looks good. Hey, I saw a pic from Christmas. Do you have a girlfriend? I just want to make sure that this isn't like we're not you know on two different pages here because I'm kind of flirting with you. Like, why not say that? Yeah. Right. I mean, you're DMing with someone. How did that start? You're asking. I'm sorry. I'm not being that good at this. I really. I just think you're don't great. Have, I just don't have a thing for this question. Like I don't okay. know. Like let's for move me, on. Like, honestly, you can write, dude. Is it like I'm flirting? Are you flirting? Are you cheating? How, what, how serious are you with this girlfriend? Are you together? Do you want to do stuff? Or maybe, like, is there a possibility that he's just like whatever? Yeah, that's a possibility. But at least like, I like it, my girl, and I don't care. Like I don't. You know, I don't. No, at least, I, I mean, that. to me, at least be honest about why you're there. Don't get in the game of like, well, maybe he's here because of this. No, no, no. I'm here because you look good. We hooked up before. I'm back, baby. And I think you're hot. Yeah. And and I think once you get that out, you know, then you're. Uh, yeah. Then you're, the reason you know, it feels icky is because you probably know you're doing something icky. Of course, but he yeah. pulled you in. He was there liking and just I like waiting. You know, he's just like, hey, I'm here whenever you're ready. Yeah. At Glitter Cheese, Lisa Trigger. Or do you want do- attention? I don't know. This one to me is, I I don't know. Let's do one more email. You ready? Of course. J Train Podcast. for another one after okay. it. Urgent. Should I stay or should I move home? I like these life ones. Yeah. 
J Train, I've emailed you before. Your advice is always spot on. Thanks for always keeping it 100. I live in Seattle and have for about five years. I'm from Northern California. My family and some lifelong friends are there, but not a huge group like I have here in Seattle. I love my job and I am happy in Seattle. Today, I was offered a transfer with my company to my hometown and it got me confused. It's not that easy to transfer unless there's a vacancy. I'm in the medical device sales business and there's not a lot of turnover with my my company. I'm close to my parents who are now in their late 60s. My brother just started having kids and I generally see myself being de- settling down there with them. What the fuck should I do? I'm 29 single and do fi- do well financially, but not well enough to buy a home when I'm in what I uh, where I'd like in Seattle. I guess my question is, should I give up a situation where I'm happy and have a solid friend group to be closer to family and perhaps buy a home? Am I crazy for considering it? Um, I, I listened to your advice about reading the clues mm, with yes. her, um, <laughs> or your lead by or your example. Yeah. And I would say, yeah, move back home, bro. You want to yeah. be with your niece and nephews. You're you love your parents. You're going to have friends there. And if you're rich, Seattle's quick. It's an hour. It's probably a 20 minute flight. Honestly, I, like, I, you can go visit all your friends in Seattle. They can visit you. You can go to Palm Springs on a trip. Like, you're adults. I mean, post-pandemic, we'll see what happens in our world. But, like, sure, take fun trips with your group of friends. Go back to Seattle for a weekend. Like, you are still going to be able to be friends with these people. Yeah, and and I would all, I totally agree with what you're saying. And here, you know, money doesn't buy you happiness, but it gets you pretty damn close. You know, so like the fact that you're like the, you know, I think also like if you let your career, I do believe in your career. This sounds bad, but I do believe like if you're happy in your career and you're making the right amount of money that you feel valued, all the other things fall into place. Your confidence is better. You can take a trip to your friends in Seattle. You can stay at a nice hotel when you go meet them. You can you can do things with, and you can make a whole new group of friends and have a whole new web of people that you have in your now hometown. I and plus family and the nephews. Like what a nice thing. Yeah. Like like and like the ability to like you know you got to grow up at some point. There are these your friends are going to grow up on you. So don't sit there waiting for uh, waiting for them to do that. Like, you know, at, I, what I noticed, like my friends from my 20s, like the ones that I hung out with, like early 20s to like later 20s, they all got relationships. They all moved on. They all had kids. They all went and did their thing. And I was happy for them doing it. I never felt bad, but I never and I did my thing. Like I went and did open mics while they went and met, you know, met their husbands and wives and had kids. That's great. But like. I'm happy now because I led with what my career would take me. And now I can let those other things fall into place. And you see your friends. You you guys do yeah. trips. People get married. Like you still, now, you know, with all these this technology, like my best friend lives in New York. And so mm-hmm. like we talk all the time. And I, it's. I know, remember I, when I graduated. I, I, I wish my family, I, I'm hoping all my family come to the West Coast, honestly. Like, sure. I would love to be around my niece and nephews. Like, that would be awesome. I remember when I graduated high school, my dad said to me, he was like, um, there'll be another version of these friends at your next place. Like, it's nice. And the people that you're friends with, you will stay friends with if it, if they matter. You know, like you're not you have a solid group in in Seattle, but and you're not going to lose that group because you move down to your, you know, to a better center. He does care about his family, like the fact that he's like, my parents are getting older, like those little like he does a female. This is a woman writing in. But I I, yeah, I. Yeah, you know, and I don't blame her. And I, I think like the solid friend group will be I also want to know where there. in Northern California. I know Seattle's really expensive, but I am curious where in Northern California is cheaper, you know? Yeah, well, it's probably, it ain't San Francisco. No. That can't be the case. <laughs> J-Train Podcast at gmail.com. J-Train Podcast more, at gmail.com. More. We'll do one more. Here with Lisa Traeger at Glitter Cheese. Ooh. Need some space. I'm on my ninth week of no work because of COVID and having a hard time since I enjoy my work and I'm usually there long hours. 
I also want to mention usually I spend about half my work day alone. I'm messaging because I don't know how to tell my husband that I want to spend more time alone. I love him and we get along great, but he wants to spend every minute together like it's a vacation. And I find myself getting irritated about little things without time to myself. We have a big house and I don't think this would be an issue. Uh, And I didn't think this would be an issue, but he just can't take a hint. I don't want to hurt his feelings and it's way more about me than him. What do we think? I mean, I don't know how long they've been married and maybe I'm being naive and too ideological. Is that the word? But you Idealistic, should be able, ideological, yeah. You should be able, or ideal, uh, maybe too idealistic, whatever. Um, maybe my ideas are too much, but I think if you're in a marriage, you should be able to be honest and say, I want to go in here by myself and read. Or I Listen, need space. Like, I'm sorry. Uh, like, that's the foundation of all my favorite relationships when I mm-hmm. see my friends around and what I dream of. And my dream is to be able to say, Hey, I want to be alone right now. Yeah. I, I, (laughs) I'm with you. This does include a deeper problem. Well, I, I also have had this issue, you know, Jess is, Jess works an office job that now exists in our apartment. The way, you know, we work is so different than people who go to a job and then come home every day. Like we, don't turn off. We're tweeting all day. We're putting out stuff. We're talking on the phone. We're having conversations on the phone that don't seem like work. Like uh, like a lot of our conversations, oh, I have a call at 12 and it's just you talking something out with a friend. Like, But that is work. So I, I've had this issue where you do need to set some structure of like, hey, I, and I think for her, one, I'll encourage her walks, take some walks, like, Go, you know, get away from the house and like walk down the block and and also like maybe setting up at the beginning of the day. Here's my schedule. Here's what I have to do. Do you mind if we keep it? You know, if uh, as long as here's what I'm going to be doing today. Do you mind if we get we come back together at this time? Also, you're married. His feelings could be hurt. If it, they're hurt, yeah. then he needs to deal with them too. You can't live in this prison of like, yeah. uh, what is it? Uh, dependent, like dependency. Like, I think what she wrote, what she wrote is actually a very good thing to say. Hey, I, I am not comfortable treating this quarantine like a vacation. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's like a very uh, relatable. Like, I would understand. I would go, yeah, you're right. Like, if I was the one treating it like vacation, I'd be like, I guess we can't go tanning on Tuesday. Like, like I, I, that makes sense to me. Like, hey, we can't keep treating this like vacation. And then you go, I don't feel comfortable doing that because I feel like I am not accomplishing the things I need to do. So when you put it in new terms and you go, I need to feel like I had a day to sleep at night so that I can wake up in the morning for the next day. Like I have that feeling a lot with comedy where it's like, you, have you gotten to like eight, like a lot of times I've gotten to like eight o'clock at night and I'm like, have I done enough? Did I do the right things? Was today a real day? And I think that happens in quarantine for a lot of people where it's like, she says she doesn't have a if job. It doesn't happen to you. You're a sociopath. Yeah, I agree. Anyone that's like, Thriving here, ba 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 ba. You are problems. Your problems, <laughs> your fucking murder, or you're in denial. Yeah. If you are not feeling the weight of what is happening and your insides and like are any, you have. I can't even relate. I, I, you I, are a human being. You are <laughs> feeling these. For things. for her, if she said like, if someone came to me and was like, "Hey, I need. I don't feel comfortable having these like these days that just." blend into each other i need some structure and if you can't give you you gotta back away so i can have that structure on my own so i feel like i'm having a nine to five because i've gone from long hours in an office to you and i playing hanky panky at three o'clock in the afternoon and that was fun once but i can't have that be for the next the whole summer yeah j train podcast at gmail.com J train podcast at gmail.com. Lisa Traeger, thank you so much. And also just to go back, like you better do this now because we might be here for a few months. Well, that's the thing for the summer. Like, you know, like, you know, Jess told me her office is closed for the summer and like they're going back in the fall. And I, you know, for a moment I was like, okay, we have to like, like figure out what we're going to do here as far as like, you know, like, you know, you can't, I think 
with working from home where it's a, a few people, it's, it's, it's multiple people sharing one space, you can kind of like do it from the seat of your pants for a while, but there's got to be a point where you guys go, hey, let's, let's create a plan here so we both feel comfortable working here. Yeah, my friend is uh, Julia. She's now working from home, and one of her friends told her, who's been working from home now like years and years yeah. that it took like a full year to get into – the rhythm and get used to it and really you know it is a strange it takes thing. it's time it so takes no, time yeah, it takes time to get used to all these things lisa thank you for coming on it's so fantastic to see you and hang with you this is i such know a pleasure. um i am so glad you had me on i can't believe you're doing this every day this is every a pleasure <laughs> um yeah this is fun i hope we help some people we help people we'll have you back soon everyone go follow lisa right now at glitter cheese at glitter cheese at glitter cheese we'll be back next episode boom hey train <laughs>